All right, the head coaches for each team, Nathan Choate and Willie Bloomquist, out at home plate right now with your umpires here for today. The home plate umpire is Eric Peterson. At first base is Stephen Corvey. Gary DeFabio is the second base umpire. And at third base today is Christopher Gonzalez. Let's go through the starting lineups for each team. First for the visiting Arizona State Sun Devils. Uh, Harris Williams led off yesterday, will lead off again today. He's the left fielder. Batting second is the designated hitter, Brandon Compton. The catcher, Ryan Campos, bats third. That's the same starting three as we saw last night. In fact, the cleanup hitter is the same as well. Jacob Tobias, the first baseman. In right field is Nick McClain. He'll bat fifth, followed by the second baseman, Ethan Mendoza. Isaiah Jackson, the center fielder, bats seventh. Mario Demera, who did not play in yesterday's game, gets the start today at third base, batting eighth. And then at shortstop today, it is Jax Ryan, batting ninth. He played at third base for the Sun Devils yesterday. Starting pitcher again is the big left-hander, Connor Markle. Uh, 4.82 ERA and 18 and two-thirds innings pitched. Markle has allowed 19 hits, 11 runs, 10 of them earned, 23 strikeouts versus eight bases on balls. For your Washington State Cougars, Max Hartman will lead off once again, the right fielder. Followed by Kyle Russell, the shortstop, batting second. Kaysen Taggart, the left fielder, will hit third. In the cleanup spot is the first baseman, Joey Kramer. Griffin Sotomayor, who came on as a pinch hitter yesterday, will uh, DH today and bat fifth. Cole Kramer, the third baseman, bat sixth. Will Cresswell, the catcher, will play, or excuse me, will bat uh, seventh. Yesterday, he kind of alternates with Jacob Morrow at that catcher spot. Nate Swartz, the center fielder, bats eighth, and Crew Park, the second baseman, in the ninth spot today. Connor Wilford is on the mound right now, taking up his taking his warm-up pitches. Wilford, a 4.85 ERA on the season. He is two and one in six appearances. Four of them starts. He's thrown 29.2 innings so far this year, allowed 34 hits, 17 runs, 16 of them earned. He has 23 strikeouts versus nine walks and opposing hitters batting 288 against him on the year. So once again, as we get ready for your first pitch here at Bailey Brighton Field, Wilford number 20 for the Cougs taking his final warm-up throws. And in the on-deck circle is Harris Williams, the left fielder, getting ready to go. So the batting lineup once or batting order here once again. Hartman, Russell, Taggart, uh, excuse me, Her Williams, Compton, Campos, Tobias, McLean, Mendoza, Jackson, Demero, Ryan for the Sun Devils on the mound, Connor Wilford, and going around the horn for the Cougs, it's Cresswell behind the plate, Joey Kramer at first, Crew Park at second, Kyle Russell at third, Cole Kramer at, uh, excuse me, Kyle Russell at short, Cole Kramer at third, Max Hartman in right field, Nate Swartz in center field, and Kaysen Taggart out there in left field. All right, we are ready for Pac-12 baseball here in Pullman. Harris Williams steps into the batter's box, and here's the first pitch from Wilford, and he takes it for strike one on the outside corner. Williams is out of Denver, Colorado. Second pitch from Wilford. Looked for the same spot, but it's just a little bit outside, so the count goes even at one and one. Williams was one for six yesterday, struck out twice in the series opener. That pitch from Wilford also just misses outside, so it is two and one. The two one now, and that's gonna be sent back over towards the clubhouse out of play on the left field side. The count goes even here at two and two. Wilford out of San Clemente, California. Fastball goes 89 to 92 miles per hour. He has a curve, a changeup, and a cutter as well. Let's see what he goes for here on a 2-2 pitch just outside. He's not missing by much, uh, but it is just outside. It's ball three, three and two. Just underway in Pullman. Cooks looking for win number 14 on the season. The 3-2 pitch. 
just missed outside once again. And the leadoff batter is aboard here for the Sun Devils in the top half of the first. Wilford really trying to paint that outside corner against the left-handed hitter in Williams. And in each of those four balls, he missed by just an inch or two to the outside. Home plate umpire Eric Peterson not giving him that little bit of leverage. Big swing and a miss from Brandon Compton on the first pitch from Wilford here. Compton was a problem yesterday. Three for six, two doubles and a single in the series opener. Wilford takes a peek quickly over to first base and now will come to the plate for the 0-1 against Compton. That's just inside. Ball one, count goes even here. Wilford, another peek over to first. And here comes the 1 1 delivery. No, a th quick throw over to first to chase Williams back to the bag, but he's back in time. On the year, Paris Williams has stolen six bases to lead the Sun Devils, six out of seven in the stolen base department. Another quick throw over to first. Boy, almost had him. Snap throw there by. Wilford, and it was awfully close at first base, but Steve Corvey says no, he got back just in time. All right, Wilford peeks in. Here comes the 1 1 delivery to Brandon Compton. Instead, another throw over there, third time already. And Williams back to the bag safely once again. Wilford, the 1-1 one, one to Compton, a pitch out there. And Williams was not going. Cresswell behind the plate, trying to see if they could catch him. Trying to swipe it back. Two one now, another throw over to first. Williams back in time once again. Cook showing a lot of concern for Williams' speed there at first. All right, Wilford, the 2-1 to Compton, and he's running. Throw from Cresswell is in time. Russell applies the tag, and the leadoff man is cut down at second base just the second time. Williams has been caught stealing this year. Nice job by the catcher, Cresswell, to jump out of his stance on the high fastball and fire a strike down there to second base. So one out here in the frame, but a 3-1 count, and that is line right to Russell, who ranges to his left and makes the stab, and quickly two out here for the Cougs in the top half of the first. Catcher number 17, Ryan Campo. Russell was playing Compton up the middle being shaded quite a ways over toward the second base bag and that meant he only needed to take a couple of steps to his left in order to snag that one out of the year. Here's Ryan Campos now. Junior out of Mesa, Arizona takes a strike from Wilford there at 79 miles per hour. Wilford's 0-1 pitch now to Campos. Inside, ball one, 1-1. One one. The 1-1 one, one pitch, that one gets the outside corner of the left-handed hitter, and the count goes to one and two. So after giving up a leadoff walk, Wilford is one strike away from getting out of this inning. Here comes the one-two, just inside, ball two. The two-two delivery. Caught him looking at strike three, and the Sun Devils go down in order as Wilford strikes out Campos to end the inning. We go to the bottom half of the first after this. This is Washington State Baseball from Learfield. Hey, Cougs. Life doesn't stop at retirement. Bishop Place has a wide range of activities, social events, and fitness options depending on your interests. We have many options to explore depending on the level of care you need. Bishop Place also has housekeeping, dining, and transportation services. Less worry, less chores, more life, and more choices. Visit us on the web at bishopplace.net or call to schedule your tour today. 
509-334-9488. We can't wait to see you. It's time to bring the big game to your backyard with spring savings on steel. Our AK Homeowner System battery tools start at just $199.99. Find yours at over 10,000 local dealers. Steel is a proud supporter of your Washington State Cougars. Real Steel. Find yours. All prices SNW SRP. All right, welcome back to Bailey Brayton Field here in Pullman, Washington. It is the bottom of the first inning. The Cougs are going to get their first look at ASU starting pitcher Connor Markle, the left-hander. Goes six foot one, two hundred pounds. He is a left-hander out of Scottsdale, Arizona. Went to Notre Dame Prep High School there, and started his collegiate career at Grand Canyon before making his way over to ASU. He has a 4.82 ERA on the season and a 1-0 record. This will be his fifth appearance of the year and his fifth start of the year for ASU. Starting lineup for the Cougs once again will be Max Hartman, the right fielder, Kyle Russell, the shortstop, bat second, Kaysen Taggart, the left fielder, in the third spot, Joey Kramer, the first baseman, will bat fourth. Griffin Sotomayor in the fifth spot is DH. Batting sixth is Cole Kramer, the third baseman. Will Cresswell, the catcher, seventh. Nate Swartz, the center fielder, eighth. And Crew Park, the second baseman, in the ninth spot for the Cougs. In the field for... ASU today is Ryan Campos behind the plate, Jacob Tobias at first, Ethan Mendoza at second, Jax Ryan at short, and Marco Demera at third. The right fielder, Nick McClain, in center fielder, Isaiah Jackson, and left field is Harris Williams. The first pitch to Hartman is a strike. Here comes the second offering, and that is also a strike as Hartman was taking in that paint of the outside corner. Hartman yesterday, two for five with a run batted in. Now hitting 368 on the year. That one just misses outside, so it's one and two to the Cougar leadoff man out of St. Albert, Alberta. No home runs, 24 runs batted in on the year. That one outside as well, it's two and two. Markle sets, here comes a 2-2, swung on and hit into the gap in right center field, but the center fielder Jackson ranges to his left and is able to make the play. So one up and one down here for the Cougs in the bottom of the first. Kyle Russell. And that brings up Kyle Russell, the shortstop at a university place over in the Tacoma area. Yesterday, Russell did not have a hit, but he did walk twice and score a run. And that one is lined in the right field, a base hit for the Cougs, their first of the day and the first of the series for Kyle Russell. First pitch swing in, and the right-handed hitter just kind of guided it out there into right field for a base knock. And that brings up Kaysen Taggart. Boy, yesterday he had a mammoth two-run homer that tied the game at four in the fifth inning to the gap in left center field just to the right of the scoreboard out there. Here's the first pitch to Taggart taking for a strike. It's 0-1. Kyle Russell, in case you're wondering on the season, does have three stolen bases in four attempts on the year. The 0-1 to Taggart, low and outside, ball one. Do have some wind blowing here in Pullman today, blowing kind of towards the right field fence. Here's the 1-1 one -one to Taggart, outside, ball two. So if you're a left-handed hitter like Taggart, if you are able to pull one, could see it clear the fence out there and right. Here's Markle, the 2-1 out. He's going to throw over to first to chase Russell back to the bag. Kyle back in plenty of time. And Markle, the lefty, resets. 
The 2 1 pitch to Taggart. Swung on and swung through it. Count goes even here at 2 and 2. Off speed pitch, and Taggart was way out in front of that one. Scoreless in the bottom of the first. Here is the 2 2 pitch to Taggart. Swung on and put in the ground, but the shortstop makes a diving play. Ryan, but he can't do anything with it, and he looks like he's in some pain at the back of the infield dirt. Ryan got the glove on it, but then wasn't even able to get to his knees to try to attempt to throw. Uh, he's sitting up on the infield dirt right now, but still down to the ground as the trainers quickly come out to take a look at him. Nonetheless, it's going to be an infield base hit for Taggart, and the Cougs now have runners here at first and second with just one out in the first inning. He made the diving play, did Ryan, deep in the hole, but then just stayed down. And, and maybe it's a, a rib cage or oblique type of thing. But we can see on the television, in-house television monitor here that he looks like he's in some pain. They've got him lifting his left arm above his head to see if he's got motion there. Now he's on his feet, but clearly wincing in pain. Might have just pulled a muscle in his side or something. Trainer's still taking a look. I don't know if he's going to be able to stay in the game, though. Hard to play shortstop without full range of motion. All right, they're still taking a look at him. He asked for his glove back. Sounds like he's going to stay in the game. So, well, maybe not. Now he's, oh, they're trying to throw him a ball and see if he can actually make a throw. So once again, it was Jax Ryan, the ASU shortstop tonight, uh, injuring himself, trying to snag a ground ball off the bat of Casey Taggart. He got his glove on it, but was uh, injured on the play while diving for it. He's playing some short toss right now with his second baseman just to see if he can continue to go. And it looks like the trainers are satisfied that he'll be able to do so. So they are heading back to the dugout now. Uh, but the Cougs here in business with two runners aboard here after a sharply hit single in the right field by Kyle Russell and then an infield base hit by Kaysen Taggart. So two on with one out for the Cougs here in the bottom of the first. And that brings up the first baseman, Joey Kramer. Kramer hitting 329 on the year. Three doubles, four home runs, and 16 runs batted in. He's out of Rohnert Park, California. And the first pitch from Markle inside, ball one. Joey Kramer. Cal State Northridge transfer. Played there for two seasons before making his way to WSU. Here's the 1-0. And taken high for a ball, 2-0. and Kramer entered the weekend with a 13-game on-base streak and a nine-game hitting streak. And that one is sent right into center field. Jackson can't make a play on it. In fact, it bounces off his knee and gets away from him. That's going to allow Russell to come all the way home and score. And the Cougs have their first lead of the ball game here, one nothing in the bottom of the first inning. Kramer just kind of looped that one out in the center field. Isaiah Jackson wasn't sure if he should come all the way in to try to make a play on it or let it bounce. When it did bounce, it skipped off his knee over toward the right, or excuse me, the left fielder, Williams, and that allowed Russell to come all the way home from second base. So one run on the board. Taggart makes his way to second base on the play. And the Cougs have three consecutive hits here in the bottom of the first inning. And that brings up Griffin Sotomayor. 
takes a strike on the inside corner for strike one. Three consecutive base hits for the Cougs here in the first. Yesterday it took them till the fifth inning before they were able to crack the Sun Devils' coat. Here's the 0-1 to Sotomayor, a big swing and a miss. Griffin came on yesterday as a pinch hitter for Johnstone and struck out in each of his two at-bats in the game. Sotomayor, 250 on the year. Here's the 0-2. Did he go around? Asking for the appeal from the first base umpire, they say, yes, he did. So Sotomayor down on strikes, and the Cougs now have two outs in the inning. That brings up the other Kramer in the Cougs lineup and the third baseman, Cole Kramer. With a chance to try to add to this lead here in the bottom of the first. First pitch, up high, ball one. Markle takes a look back at second base, now comes to the plate and fires a fastball outside for ball two, it's two and oh. Just to keep you updated on NCAA tournament action, Gonzaga has been blowing out Kansas here in the second half. They lead the Jayhawks 82-60 with two and a half minutes to play. Next pitch to Kramer in there off speed for a strike, it's two and one. Cougs still about 40 minutes away from first pitch in Omaha. Here's the 2-1 delivery to Kramer. Swung on and fouled, back out of play. Down the right field side. Taggart's out there at second. Joey Kramer out at first. Cole Kramer at the plate with a 2-2 pitch on the way, and that is put on the ground right to Jax Ryan. He fires to second and gets the out, and the Sun Devils get out of the inning, but not before the Cougs push, push one run across the plate. They lead it 1-0. We'll be back with the second inning after this. Hey Cougs, life doesn't stop at retirement. Bishop Place has a wide range of activities, social events, and fitness options depending on your interests. We have many options to explore depending on the level of care you need. Bishop Place also has housekeeping, dining, and transportation services. Less worry, less chores, more life, and more choices. Visit us on the web at bishopplace.net or call to schedule your tour today. 509-334-9488. We can't wait to see you. That to-do list you have needs one more thing. Chill. It's an easy thing to do. Just crack open an ice cold Coors Light and chill. Take the afternoon off and binge watch anything. Go to happy hour and stay for a couple hours. Who's counting anyways? Or hang out with just your dog because you've had enough human interaction this week. Whatever you do, do it with a Coors Light. Mountain cold refreshment made to chill. 2024 Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Celebrate responsibly. It is Bark in the Park Day here at Bailey Brayton Field in Pullman, where fans are invited to bring their dogs here to the ballpark. And we've got quite a few of them in attendance here today. The Cougs with an early 1-0 lead over the Sun Devils here as we get ready for the top half of the second inning. Due up here for the Sun Devils, the first baseman Jacob Tobias, the right fielder Nick McLean, and the second baseman Ethan Mendoza. Connor Wilford issued a walk to the first batter of the game in Harris Williams, but he was thrown out at second, and then Brandon Compton lined out, and Ryan Campo struck out to end the top half of the first inning. Here is the first pitch to Tobias, and in there for a strike, 76 miles per hour on the curveball there from Wilford. 0-1 delivery now. Swing and a miss to Tobias at 81 miles per hour. I'm guessing that's the change. 0-2 pitch on the way to Tobias and a swing and a miss on the outside corner. Three pitches, three strikes, and 
Wilford had Tobias completely baffled on that event, on that at bat, I should say. Second consecutive strikeout here for Wilford. I was able to catch a glimpse of Wilford's potential last season. I'll get more to it in here in just a second as he fires outside for ball one to the right fielder, Nick McLean. Here comes the 1-0 now, swung on and lifted in the center field. Nate Swartz underneath it, going to have plenty of room and quickly two down here for the Sun Devils in the second. It was at Oregon State, and the date was March the 10th, so just over a year ago this time, where Wilford came on in relief through four scoreless innings against the Beavers. Four scoreless no-hit innings, I should say, with six strikeouts as well, and... He became a, a really good reliever for the Cougs last year. And there's the first hit of the game for the Sun Devils as McLean sends one into right field for, excuse me, Mendoza sends one into right field there for a two out base hit. And that brings up the center fielder, Isaiah Jackson. Jackson in yesterday's game was one for five with a run scored. Batting 234 on the year. First pitch from Wilford. Swung on a hit right up the middle. So back to back base hits. And McLean, or excuse me, Mendoza is trying to take third. Here comes the throw. Not in time. So Mendoza safe at third on the base hit into center field. I don't know if Swartz thought that they were going to try to test his arm on that one, but they did. And the Sun Devils take advantage grabbing an extra base on that one, putting runners on the corners here now with two outs. So after Wilford got the first two outs very quickly here in the inning, he's now got to deal with a little bit of trouble with two men on. And that brings up Mario Demera. Did not play in last night's game, batting 105 on the season. First pitch of Demera, the right-handed hitter, is outside for ball one. Here comes the 1-0. Inside, almost hit him. The catcher Cresswell asked the first umpire, first plate, um, excuse me, first base umpire if he went around. He says he did not, so the count is 2-0. So Mendoza's out there at third. Isaiah Jackson at first. Here comes the 2-0 delivery down the heart of the plate for strike one. Wilford this season has thrown as many as 97 pitches. That one is lifted high into the air in right, or excuse me, left center field. Swartz underneath it near the warning track for out number three. And Wilford gets out of it without giving up any runs. And we go to the bottom half of the second. The Cougs still in the lead here, one nothing. <laughs> Hey Cougs, life doesn't stop at retirement. Bishop Place has a wide range of activities, social events, and fitness options depending on your interests. We have many options to explore depending on the level of care you need. Bishop Place also has housekeeping, dining, and transportation services. Less worry, less chores, more life, and more choices. Visit us on the web at bishopplace.net or call to schedule your tour today. 509-334-9488. We can't wait to see you. A lot goes into Washington State athletes reaching peak performance for game day, including the right nutrition. At Wilbur Ellis, we know that healthy crop performance requires the same attention to nutrition as an athlete. That's why we use benchmark data points to maximize crop productivity through nutrient efficiency. For 100 years, family-owned Wilbur Ellis has been partnering with Washington's farmers to grow healthier crops. That is the winning ag experience for Cougar Nation, locally provided by Wilbur Ellis. All right, welcome back to Bailey Brayton Field here at Cougs with an early 1-0 lead over the Sun Devils in this second game of a three-game Pac-12 series here in Pullman. Uh, NCAA tournament action, again, we mentioned that the Cougs are just about 40 minutes away from tip-off in Omaha against the second-seeded Iowa State Cyclones. 
Cougs in their first tournament since 2008, trying to get back to the Sweet 16 since for the first time since that same season as well when they beat Notre Dame in a round of 32 game to advance to the Sweet 16 where they eventually lost to North Carolina. It has gone final in Salt Lake City, though. Gonzaga with a 21-point win over Kansas, 89-68. to Anton Watson with 21 points and six rebounds for GU. Leading things off for the Cougs here in the second is the catcher, Will Cresswell. And he takes a strike on the outside corner from Connor Markle. Bowen one. Jacob Morrow started behind the plate for the Cougs yesterday. It's Cresswell today. He takes a strike for strike two there as well. It's 0 and 2. Cresswell batting 188 on the year. This is his ninth start of the season. And that one down low for ball one. It's one and two. Markle working quickly now. The one-two pitch lifted high into center field, but Jackson is underneath it, taking a few steps back and makes the catch. So Cresswell flies out to center for the first out of the inning here in the second for the Cougs. That brings up Nate Swartz, the center fielder. Swartz yesterday was one for three, two runs scored, drove in a run, and also had a walk in that game. Swartz, we've seen his numbers go up considerably from last season being able to play every day. Big swing and a miss from Nate on the first pitch from Markle, and it's 0-1. Last year, Swartz batted 184 on the season. Right now, he's at 347. 0 1 to Swartz, misses low. So it's now 1 and 1 on the year. And last year's struggles were really baffling for Nate because he batted 273 in 2022 and 373 in 2021. Nate takes a ball low there again. It's 2 and 1 now to the center fielder out of Farmington, New Mexico. And here comes the 2-1 to Swartz. Big cut again, and he misses over the top of it. Count goes even here at 2-2. Two and two. The 2-2 two -two to Swartz. Big cut and a miss again, and he's down on strikes. That is the second strikeout of the game here for Markle. And quickly two down for the Cougs here in the second. That's going to bring up the second baseman, Crew Park. Park was able to drive in a run uh, last night with a uh, sacrifice fly to center. In fact, that scored Swartz after he had uh, doubled and taken third on a misplay by the Sun Devils. And first pitch to Park is in there for a strike. Park on the season has started every game for Washington State, batting 254, no home runs, but 13 runs batted in. Second pitch down the middle for a strike again. It's 0-2. Markle seemingly pitching a lot more confidently than he did back in the first inning. Here's the 0-2 now to Crew Park. Way outside. Try to get him to chase. And it's 1-2. All right, the one-two to Crew Park. He could get a piece of it. Ah, that's called it. They say he struck out on it. And back-to-back -back strikeouts for Markle. And down go the Cougs in the second. They still lead it, though, by a count of one nothing. We'll be back with third inning action after this. This is Washington State Baseball from Learfield. The Clearwater River Casino and Lodge proudly supports Washington State University Athletics. The premier venue for events and entertainment located four miles east of Lewiston, Idaho. Come hit the jackpot with us with over 600 gaming machines, saltwater pool, restaurant, and giant screens in the stadium sports bar. Owned and operated by the Nez Perce Tribe, our hospitality is legendary. Stay, play, and get away with the Clearwater River Casino. Go Cougs! 
Boost Collaborative is a proud sponsor of Cougar Basketball and is a proud supporter of people with disabilities on the Palouse. For over 50 years, Boost Collaborative has been here to help families and their toddlers meet developmental milestones. For youth and adults, Boost provides job placement, on-the-job training, and follow-along supports. Now you can play a part in Boost's success through your donations and purchases at Palouse Treasures Thrift Store in Pullman. Boost Collaborative, empowering people with disabilities on the Palouse. Go Cougs! This copyrighted broadcast is an exclusive presentation of Learfield under the broadcasting rights granted by Washington State University. Reuse of this presentation is prohibited without the express written consent of Washington State University and Learfield. Announcers are provided by Learfield and approved by Washington State University. All right, welcome back to Pullman. We're ready for third inning action. Connor Wilford getting ready to start things off against Jax Ryan for Arizona State inside on the right-handed hitter for ball one. Ryan, we mentioned, uh, hurt himself back in the first inning on trying to make a diving stab in the hole at short. Uh, was able to remain in the game, though, and here he is with his first at-bat of the day. Second pitch was a ball. Here comes the third offering from Wilford. That's on the ground at the shortstop. Russell backhands, fires over to first to Kramer for the first out of the inning. Got him by a step. And one up and one down for the Sun Devils here in the third. That brings things back to the top of the order for ASU with the left fielder Harris Williams who walked to lead off the game but was then thrown out at second on a nice throw from the catcher Will Cresswell. First pitch to Williams showing bunt and taps it foul. So he's behind the count here, 0 and 1. Quick check of some scores around the Pac-12 conference. Boy, in Corvallis. It's the Beavers with a 10 to nothing lead already over the Huskies in the bottom of the first inning. Strike on the outside corner here to Harris Williams and it's 0-2. The Beavers put up 10 runs in the opening frame at home against the Huskies. Stanford and Creighton are tied 2-2 after two. And that one is lifted into the air, but right to the third baseman, Cole Kramer, who just has to make a little bit of hop and Two up and two down here for the Cardinal. Harris Williams hit it right at Cole Kramer, who basically stayed flat-footed before leaping in the air to make the easy grab. And that brings up Brandon Compton as Wilford trying to go one, two, three here in the first. Starts him off with an off-speed pitch that just misses for ball one. Next pitch on the way, just outside again for ball two. Wilford has been pretty sharp so far here in this ball game. Here's the 2-0. He's really trying to get that outside corner, but he just misses again with it. So he's well behind Compton here at 3-0. Compton batting 355 on the year. Here's the 3-0 pitch, and he lost him outside for ball four. So a four-pitch walk for Compton, and the Sun Devils have their first base runner of the inning here with two outs. That's going to bring up the catcher, Ryan Campos. He struck out to end the first inning for the Sun Devils. Last night, he was two for four with two runs scored and a run batted in. A little bit of confusion, a timeout here for Compton to get rid of some of his batting gear out there at first base. Wilford, off-speed delivery right over the plate there at 78 miles per hour. Campos was taking it all the way, and it's 0-1. The 0-1 out of Campos gets away from Cresswell, but not far enough for Compton to be able to sprint down to second base. He retreats to the first base bag, and the count is even at one and one. One nothing, Washington State here in the top of the third. Okay, okay. 
Wilford's 1-1 delivery swung on and chopped to the first baseman, Joey Kramer, who catches it on the hop, steps on the bag himself, and the Cougs get the third out. We'll go to the bottom of the third after this. It's 1-0 Washington State in the lead. It's time to bring the big game to your backyard with spring savings on steel. Our AK Homeowner System battery tools start at just $199.99. Find yours at over 10,000 local dealers. Steel is a proud supporter of your Washington State Cougars. Real Steel. Find yours. All prices SNW SRP. Hey Cougs, life doesn't stop at retirement. Bishop Place has a wide range of activities, social events, and fitness options depending on your interests. We have many options to explore depending on the level of care you need. Bishop Place also has housekeeping, dining, and transportation services. Less worry, less chores, more life, and more choices. Visit us on the web at bishopplace.net or call to schedule your tour today. 509-334-9488. We can't wait to see you. All right, welcome back to Bailey Brighton Field as we play now in the bottom of the third inning. Washington State struck first with a run in the bottom of the first inning, and that's where the score remains here now in the third. Due up for the Cougs here is the top of the order. The leadoff man, right fielder Max Hartman, will be followed by the shortstop Kyle Russell and the left fielder Kaysen Taggart. Hartman, again, out of St. Albert, Alberta, played for the Okotoks Dogs Academy in Canada. As a senior, was even selected to play for Team Canada's junior U18 national team at the World Baseball Confederation Baseball World Cup in Florida. First pitch now to Hartman. Off speed, just misses low. Ball one. Hartman flew out in his first at bat in the first. Swung on and chopped foul down the first base side. Cat goes even here at one and one. All right, here's the 1-1 one -one now to Hartman. Swung on and put on the ground. The second baseman, Mendoza, ranges to his left and makes the throw to first for the first out of the inning. So Hartman out on the 4-3 ground out, and that brings up Kyle Russell. All right, the live scoring system here uh, in the ballpark is telling us that Jax Ryan, who we mentioned, was injured uh, trying to make a diving stab early in the game has been replaced now by Steven Ondina. So Ondina out there at shortstop right now. He was actually the starter at short in last night's game. First pitch to Russell was a strike. Here's the second offering. That one lifted high into the air. The first baseman, Tobias, right on the foul line behind the first base bag, makes the catch and quickly two up and two down for Washington State in the third. So again, Ondina in for Jax Ryan at shortstop for the Sun Devils. And that brings up Kaysen Taggart. Taggart singled back in the first. Again, had that towering two-run homer in last night's win for the Cougs. And he takes a strike. It's 0-1 against Connor Markle. Here's Markle's 0-1 delivery. Just misses outside. Count now even at 1-1. Taggart with the team leading six home runs for the Cougs here on the season. Also tied for the lead in RBIs with 24. Taggart takes low. Now he's ahead of the count here at two and one. All right, Markle sets. Next pitch to Taggart. Right at the waist over the plate for a strike two and two. So the count's even. Here's the 2-2 to Taggart. Swung on and lifted foul. That's back towards 
the concourse here at Bailey Brayton where they've got the grill working, firing up burgers and dogs and what have you for fans here in attendance. And the count remains here at two and two. Taggart taps home plate. Here comes the 2-2. Two -two. Swung on and lifted into center field. Jackson with his back to the ball, but is able to easily make the catch out there near the warning track. So three up and three down in the inning for the Cougs. We go to the fourth after this. Washington State still with the one nothing lead over the Sun Devils. Boost Collaborative is a proud sponsor of Cougar Basketball and is a proud supporter of people with disabilities on the Palouse. For over 50 years, Boost Collaborative has been here to help families and their toddlers meet developmental milestones. For youth and adults, Boost provides job placement, on-the-job training, and follow-along supports. Now you can play a part in Boost's success through your donations and purchases at Palouse Treasures Thrift Store in Pullman. Boost Collaborative, empowering people with disabilities on the Palouse. Go Cougs! Which schools will take home the prestigious Learfield Directors Cup for the 2023-24 college athletic season? You can follow the standings of your favorite school or alma mater at L Directors Cup on Twitter and online at thedirectorscup.com. That's thedirectorscup.com and L Directors Cup on Twitter. Trophies will be awarded in June 2024 to the winning institutions in all competitive divisions. Learfield Directors Cup, the crowning achievement in college athletics. All right, welcome back to the ballpark here in Pullman. Cougs with a 1-0 lead over the Sun Devils of Arizona State here in the early going. Connor Wilford back out on the mound for to begin his fourth inning of work. And so far through three, Connor has pitched three scoreless innings, given up just two hits. He has struck out two and also walked two. Leading things off will be the first baseman, Jacob Tobias. He'll be followed by the right fielder, Nick McClain, and the second baseman, Ethan Mendoza. Off-speed pitch in there for a strike to start things off against Tobias. That was Wilford's 41st pitch of this game. Misses low for a ball, one and one. Third pitch is just outside. And now Tobias ahead of the count here at two and one. And that one is put on the ground. Crew Park makes a diving play, gets to his feet and fires over to Joey Kramer. Great defensive play from the Cougar second baseman. I thought that was through in the right field, but Park makes a diving stab to his right, gets the glove on it and fires to first for the first out of the inning. Nice play by the Cougar second baseman. And that brings up Nick McLean now. First pitch, just misses, ball one. And Wilford just misses again, so quickly two balls against Nick McLean. Wilford's 2-0 delivery. Just misses outside again. He's really, really trying to work that outside corner to left-handed hitters and just not quite getting the location. Just barely missing. Here's the 3-0 now. And a strike. McLean was taken all the way on that one. Here's the 3-1 delivery from Wilford. Smoked foul up the right field line. Hard hit, but just foul. Here's the 3-2 delivery, and that is lifted in the center field. Swartz won't be able to make a play on it. He catches it on a hop, fires into Russell, but the Sun Devils have a one-out base hit here in the fourth off the bat of Nick McLean. And we want to tell you that 
You can earn your bragging rights at Northern Quest with more slot machines, table games, restaurants, lounges, and luxury hotel rooms than anyone else in the region. Northern Quest, yes, the best. More at northernquest.com. Here's the first pitch to Mendoza. That's also poked up the middle for a base hit. So back-to-back -back base hits into center field for the Sun Devils here with one out in the fourth. McLean's was lifted into center. Mendoza's was a ground ball through the hole between second and short. And now the Sun Devils have a little bit of something going on here in the fourth as Isaiah Jackson, the center fielder, comes to the plate. First pitch to Jackson, taken down low, ball one. Connor Wilford takes a look back at second. Now comes to the plate. Big cut from Jackson, but it's fouled back into the netting for strike one. Here's the 1-1 one -one out of Jackson. Outside, ball two. So Wilford now trying to work out of a little bit of a jam here after giving up back-to-back -back singles with one out. Here's the 2-1. Swung on and lifted into left center field. Left field, I should say. Russell, the shortstop, going back on it and makes the play on the outfield grass. Taggart was coming in. Russell was going out. But Russell, great range from that short field position, gets the second out of the inning. And that brings up Mario Demera now with two outs in the frame. Righty on righty matchup here. For Wilford, big swing and a miss from Demera on that first pitch. I think that was the change from Wilford, and Demera was way out in front of it. He flew out in his first at bat back in the second. Here's the 0 1 in there for a strike. That started way inside and then tailed back over the plate. Nice movement on that pitch from Wilford, and it's 0 and 2 to the Sun Devils' third baseman. Wilford's 0-2, outside, ball one. Cresswell did a nice job staying in front of that pitch down in the dirt so that the runners could not advance. McLean's out there at second. Mendoza is on at first. Connor Wilford, the Cougar starter, trying to get out of the inning here and keep the Sun Devils scoreless. The 1-2 pitch to Demera. Swung on and lifted in the center field. Swartz has his back to it going towards the warning track, but makes the play easily. And the Cougs are keeping the Sun Devils scoreless here through three and a half innings. We'll come back for the bottom of the fourth after this. Still 1-0 Washington State. The Clearwater River Casino and Lodge proudly supports Washington State University Athletics. The premier venue for events and entertainment located four miles east of Lewiston, Idaho. Come hit the jackpot with us with over 600 gaming machines, saltwater pool, restaurant, and giant screens in the stadium sports bar. Owned and operated by the Nez Perce Tribe, our hospitality is legendary. Stay, play, and get away with the Clearwater River Casino. Go Cooks! It's time to bring the big game to your backyard with spring savings on steel. Our AK Homeowner System battery tools start at just $199.99. Find yours at over 10,000 local dealers. Steel is a proud supporter of your Washington State Cougars. Real steel. Find yours. All prices SNW SRP. All right, welcome back to Pullman. Washington State clinging to a 1-0 lead here against the Sun Devils as we get ready for the bottom half of the fourth inning. ASU threaten in the top of the fourth with back-to-back one-out singles, but Connor Wilford leaves them stranded there. And uh, Wilford 
so far in this ball game has gone four innings, allowing four hits, no runs. He has two walks and two strikeouts and has thrown a total of 58 pitches. So should be able to go through five, if not six, uh, the clip that he's been going here so far. All right, Joey Kramer coming to the plate here for the Cougs to lead off the fourth inning. The first baseman is one for one with a single back in the first. Big swing from Joey at a breaking ball over the top, and it's 0-1. He'll be followed in the lineup by Griffin Sotomayor, the uh, designated hitter, and Cole Kramer, the third baseman. Markles, 0-1 oh, out of Kramer, lifted into right field. McLean going back toward the wall. Back, back, and it's over the wall. The wind just kind of carried that one out of here. And Joey Kramer has his fifth home run of the season for the Cougs. A solo shot to lead things off here in the fourth, and it's 2-0 Washington State. Boy, that looked like it might be a harmless fly ball to right, but the wind just kept carrying it over and over the wall. McLean could only take a look at it as it cleared the fence, and it's 2-0 Washington State. Griffin Sotomayor fouls one deep out of play that hits the roof of the Miller Indoor Baseball Training Facility out there in right field. But a home run for Kramer to energize the crowd here to lead off the fourth to make it 2 nothing. Next pitch to Sotomayor misses for a ball, and it's 1-1. One and one. Next pitch outside. Sotomayor wisely lays off, and it's 2-1. and one. Sotomayor, the... Third string catcher, whoa, takes a wild swing at that one, and his bat goes flying into the Cougar dugout. You saw a few Cougs scatter at that one. Trying to get out of harm's way. Sotomayor started at DH on Wednesday against Seattle U. Hit his first career home run. It was a two-run shot to right field which is exactly where Kramer just took one out of the ballpark. Here's the 2-2 two -two to Sotomayor outside. The count goes full here at 3-0. So Sotomayor really the third string catcher for the Cougs, but playing DH here today. The 3-2 delivery swing and a miss and down on strikes goes Sotomayor. That's four consecutive at bats now, going back to yesterday's ball game that he has struck out in. And that brings up Cole Kramer here now with one out in the fourth. He grounded out to end the inning back in the first. Kramer, though, batting 395 on the year. First pitch, upstairs, ball one. Again, I want to remind everybody we're now just over 10 minutes away from tip off for the Cougs in Omaha in their NCAA tournament game. Swing and a miss by Kramer for strike one. He was swinging for the fences on that one. Here's the 1-1 one, one from Markle, way outside. Ball two. The 2-1 delivery to Cole Kramer, swung on and fouled out of play towards the beer garden out there in right. All right, the 2-2, two, two, now to Kramer. Swung on and lifted high in the air. Jackson, the center fielder, coming in. The right fielder, McLean, is actually going to make the play in right center. And two down now for the Cougs here in the fourth. And the catcher, Cresswell, who flew out back in the second, is due up next here for the Cougs who now lead it two to nothing after the Joey Kramer leadoff home run here in the fourth. Here's the first pitch from Markle put on the ground, but right at the second baseman Mendoza, who fires over to first in plenty of time to retire the side. So the Cougs push another one across though, and they now lead the Sun Devils two nothing here in this second game of this Pac-12 series. We'll be right back with the fifth inning after this. 
Boost Collaborative is a proud sponsor of Cougar Basketball and is a proud supporter of people with disabilities on the Palouse. For over 50 years, Boost Collaborative has been here to help families and their toddlers meet developmental milestones. For youth and adults, Boost provides job placement, on-the-job training, and follow-along supports. Now you can play a part in Boost's success through your donations and purchases at Palouse Treasures Thrift Store in Pullman. Boost Collaborative, empowering people with disabilities on the Palouse. Go Cougs! A lot goes into Washington State athletes reaching peak performance for game day, including the right nutrition. At Wilbur Ellis, we know that healthy crop performance requires the same attention to nutrition as an athlete. That's why we use benchmark data points to maximize crop productivity through nutrient efficiency. For 100 years, family-owned Wilbur Ellis has been partnering with Washington's farmers to grow healthier crops. That is the winning ag experience for Cougar Nation, locally provided by Wilbur Ellis. All right, Connor Wilford back out there to start the fifth inning here for the Cougs, and he has thrown 58 pitches so far. That's pretty decent pitch economy there through four innings for him. Hopefully he'll be able to make a deep uh, performance here for Nathan Choate and the Cougs. I want to tell you, Pullman Regional Hospital and Washington State University Athletics are partners in excellent as the official hospital of Washington State University Athletics. Pullman Regional Hospital provides quality care and support to over 500 student athletes. Let the team that takes care of the Cougs take care of you. Go Cougs. All right, so leading things off here for Arizona State is... The shortstop, Steven Ondino, again, we mentioned he came on in place of Jax Ryan, who decided he could no longer continue. And that first pitch hit right on the ground to Park, who throws it over to Joey Kramer at first and quickly one up and one down for Connor Wilford and the Cougs here in the fifth. First pitch swing in by Ondino. And that brings things back to the top of the lineup for the left fielder, Harris Williams, who walked in the first but was thrown out at second base trying to steal and then lined out in the third. Swung on first pitch, and it's right at the, the right fielder, Hartman, who really barely needed to move his feet at all. He stayed firmly planted and was able to get under that one for the second out of the inning. So two pitches and two outs here for Wilford here in the fifth. Let's see if he can make it three pitches and three outs here against Brandon Compton. First pitch on the way, and that will not be the case as he misses outside for ball one. Wilford's 1-0 now to Compton. Outside again, ball two. Compton lined out in the first and walked back in the third. One of two walks issued by Wilford here so far today. Third pitch misses just outside. All day long against left-handed hitters, Wilford has been trying to paint that outside corner of the plate, and he's been just missing by an inch or two each time. Here's the 3-0 now to Compton. That one's in there for a strike. Compton taken all the way on the 88-mile-per-hour fastball. Wilford looking into his dugout for some instruction. Now goes into his windup, the 3-1 delivery, put on the ground to park again, one hopper, gloves it, fires over to first, and three up and three down for Wilford here in the fifth. And the Cougs continue to lead the Sun Devils by a count of 2 nothing. back with the bottom of the fifth. After this, this is Washington State Baseball from Learfield. That to-do list you have needs one more thing, chill. It's an easy thing to do. Just crack open a nice cold Coors Light and chill. Take the afternoon off and binge watch anything. Go to happy hour and stay for a couple hours. Who's counting anyways? Or hang out with just your dog because you've had enough human interaction this week. Whatever you do, do it with a Coors Light. Mountain cold refreshment made to chill. 2024 Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Celebrate responsibly. 
A lot goes into Washington State athletes reaching peak performance for game day, including the right nutrition. At Wilbur Ellis, we know that healthy crop performance requires the same attention to nutrition as an athlete. That's why we use benchmark data points to maximize crop productivity through nutrient efficiency. For 100 years, family-owned Wilbur Ellis has been partnering with Washington's farmers to grow healthier crops. That is the winning ag experience for Cougar Nation, locally provided by Wilbur Ellis. All right, welcome back to Pullman, where the Cougs lead it by a count of 2 nothing. Before we go any further, let's pause 10 seconds for stations to identify themselves here on the Washington State Sports Network from Learfield. All right, Connor Markle takes the last of his warm-up tosses here at Bailey Brayton Field and set to lead things off for the Cougs. And the fifth is the center fielder, Nate Swartz. Only one at bat so far here today. He struck out back in the second inning. He'll be followed by the second baseman, Crew Park, and the right fielder, Max Hartman. Swartz batting 342 on the year, though. Three home runs, 17 runs batted in. Here's the first pitch from ASU starter Connor Markle. And Swartz takes low for ball one. Markle resets. Here's the 1-0 delivery now. Swartz taken all the way that time, too. But that's in there for a strike, and it's one and one. Next pitch on the way, Swartz fouls it back into the netting. And the count goes to one and two now. Swartz in last night's game was one for three with two runs scored and an RBI. That pitch down low, the catcher Campos does a nice job to keep it in front. The count goes even here at two and two. 2-2 now to Swartz, swing and a miss for strike three. So two plate appearances and two strikeouts for Nate here today. And that is going to be strikeout number five on the day for Connor Markle of ASU. Crew Park, the second baseman, now to the plate. He also struck out in his only other plate appearance back in the second. First pitch from Markle, swung on and fouled, back out of play. A cool and cloudy day here in Pullman. Here's the 0-1 to Park. Down low, ball one. The catcher Campos tried to appeal to the first plate umpire, Stephen Corvey, to see if he went around. He did not. Here's the 1-1 now to Park. Just catches the inside corner of the plate for a strike. And it's one and two. Each team with four hits, but it's two nothing Washington State. That one way outside to Crew Park. And the count goes to two and two. Markle now up to 68 pitches. Here's the 69th and it's fouled directly down to the plate by Park and he'll live to see another pitch. Two nothing Washington State here in the bottom of the fifth. This was the frame where the Cougs exploded for six runs in last night's game. Here's the 2-2 delivery. Park takes down low for ball three. Count goes full now to the Cougar second baseman. ASU had led it 4 nothing yesterday before the Cougs exploded, getting two two-run homers in the frame. That one inside, and Park has a one-out walk. Nice job of patience by the Cougar second baseman. That is the 12th walk drawn by Crew Park on the season. That puts him into a tie with Cole Kramer for the team lead on the year. And this brings up the right fielder, Max Hartman. The sophomore batting 360 on the year. He flew out in the first and grounded out in the third. That means he's due for a base hit now. First pitch just catches the outside corner of the play for a strike. It's 0-1. 
Next pitch from Markle, swing and a miss from Hartman. It's 0-2. So Parks on at first base after the one out walk. Has not stolen a base yet this season. Markle takes a look over to first, now comes to the plate, and Hartman puts it through the hole into right field. Parks gonna be able to, nope, they're gonna hold him up. I thought he was gonna be able to advance to third on the base hit, but the third base coach for the Cougs tells him to hold up, and the Cougs have two runners on here now with one out for Kyle Russell. Hartman didn't try to get fancy with that one. He just put it through the hole in right for a solid base hit. Fifth hit of the ball game now for the Cougs. And Markle suddenly in a little bit of trouble here facing Kyle Russell. First pitch to Russell up high, ball one. Russell singled and scored back in the first, flew out in the third. Shortstop, who's batting 272 on the year. Markle wheels around and fires back to second, but back in plenty of time is Crew Park. Here comes the 1-0 to Russell. Park was running on the play, but it's fouled back and out of play back toward the, where they're building the indoor practice facility behind the right field bleachers here at Bailey Brayton. By the way, that practice facility has seen a lot of progress in the last few weeks. I was last here for the UCLA basketball game a couple weeks ago. It's looking to be in a pretty impressive structure. Russell lifts one high in the air into center field. Jackson is underneath it, and no chance for the runners to advance as that landed in shallow uh, right center field. So two down now, and it's going to be up to Kaysen Taggart to try to drive in a run here for the Cougs with two outs in the front. It is 3-13, which means we are just about ready for a tip-off in Omaha for Kyle Smith and the Cougar men's basketball team as they take on the two-seed Iowa State. We'll be keeping an eye on that game and giving you updates throughout. Here's Kaysen Taggart. Takes a strike at 89 mile per hour fastball down the heart of the plate. Taggart homered in yesterday's game. The homer here would really break things open here for the Cougs, trying to push a two-run lead to five. Here's the 0-1 from Marco. Belt high with another fastball at 89, and Taggart quickly behind in the count at 0-2. Taggart's six foot six, so his strikeout is a lot bigger than most batters. Here's the 0-2 now to Taggart. Outside corner, caught him looking for strike three. Taggart doesn't like it, but the side is retired as the Cougs leave two men on base. We'll go to the top of the sixth after this. Still 2-0 Washington State. Which schools will take home the prestigious Learfield Directors Cup for the 2023-24 college athletic season? You can follow the standings of your favorite school or alma mater at L Directors Cup on Twitter and online at thedirectorscup.com. That's thedirectorscup.com and L Directors Cup on Twitter. Trophies will be awarded in June 2024 to the winning institutions in all competitive divisions. Learfield Directors Cup, the crowning achievement in college athletics. Boost Collaborative is a proud sponsor of Cougar Basketball and is a proud supporter of people with disabilities on the Palouse. For over 50 years, Boost Collaborative has been here to help families and their toddlers meet developmental milestones. For youth and adults, Boost provides job placement, on-the-job training, and follow-along supports. Now you can play a part in Boost's success through your donations and purchases at Palouse Treasures Thrift Store in Pullman. Boost Collaborative, empowering people with disabilities on the Palouse. Go Cougs! Connor Wilford remains in the game for Washington State, and why not? The big six-foot-four right-hander out of San Clemente, California, has been 
very good for Nathan Choate so far here today. He's through five innings pitch. He's allowed just four hits, no runs, two walks, and two strikeouts, and he's only thrown 65 pitches. We mentioned earlier that uh, Connor has pitched as many as 97 on the year. That was in a six-inning effort against Kansas back in that Round Rock Classic. One, two, three, four other times this year he's gone to 90 pitches or more. So Connor should have uh, plenty left in the tank here for WSU. The catcher, Ryan Campos, to lead things off here for Arizona State in the sixth. First pitch to Campos. Just misses inside. Ball one on an off-speed pitch at 76 miles per hour. Campos will be followed by Jacob Tobias and Nick McLean. Second pitch in there for a strike at one and one. Wilford's 1-1 delivery and out of Campos. Misses outside with a fastball, and it's 2-1. and one. First meeting all time in Omaha between Washington State and Iowa State in the NCAA tournament. Cougs in their crimson uniforms today. That one just misses the outside portion of the plate again. It's 3-1. and one. The Cyclones in white. Cougs win the opening tip, and they'll have the first possession. Like we said, we'll continue to give you updates throughout this baseball game. Wilford now with a 3-1 to Campos. Swung on and hit on a chop to Russell. The shortstop gobbles it up, fires to first, pulls Joey Kramer off the bag, and he can't apply the tag. We're going to have to see how that goes down, if they're going to call that an infield hit or an error on the shortstop, Russell. Look like a routine play for Kyle, who's always very good defensively but the throw pulled Kramer just a little bit off the bag they're going to call it an error so that brings up Jacob Tobias the first baseman Wilford takes a look over there at first base now comes to the plate and this one does catch the outside corner of the plate with the fastball it's 0-1 we mentioned Wilford continuing to try to pound the outside portion of the plate to left-handed hitters and he gets it on that one. Fooled Tobias there with an off-speed pitch at 77, but he does get a piece of it and fouls it back. Isaac Jones, two free throws on the basketball team's opening possession. They lead it 2-0. Here's the next pitch to Tobias upstairs with a fastball at 89. It's 1-2. Wilford again takes a look over at Campos at first. Now comes to the plate. Sharply hit single in the right field. And Campos will be held up at second. But the Sun Devils in business here with two runners on and nobody out in the sixth. And that brings up Nick McLean. The right fielder flew out in the second and singled back in the fourth. McLean was a really tough out for the Cougs yesterday. He walked twice and was also hit by a pitch and had two singles. He reached base five times. First pitch to McLean. Outside, ball one. Infield playing in at double play depth here with nobody out and two runners on. Wilford. Off-speed pitch, but it comes in high. It's 2-0 and to McLean. And Cresswell, the catcher, going to have a word with his pitcher out on the mound here to make sure that they don't mix up any signals with two men or, or two runners, excuse me, on base here in the sixth. Mask is off, gloves covering the faces so that nobody can hear or try to lip read whatever it is they're saying. But Cresswell's made his point, and now we'll head back behind home plate. If you're just joining us, it's 2-0 Washington State here in the top half of the sixth inning. But ASU threatening with two on, two on and nobody out. Here's the 2-0 pitch lifted high into the air. Second baseman Park is underneath it on the infield dirt and makes the play. So one out and a big out here for Connor Wilford in the six because a double play here now could get you out of this inning without 
giving up any runs. Ethan Mendoza. Now to the plate here for ASU. He's two for two, two singles on the day. First pitch to Mendoza. Misses for a ball. Wilford takes a look in. Now the 1 0 delivery. Swung on a hit up the middle. Swartz is going to make a play on it, and they're going to have to hold Campos there at first. He had to wait at second base to make sure that base hit was going to get through, and that allowed uh, Swartz to get up on it and make a play and hold him at third base. So the bases are loaded, but there are now two outs, or excuse me, there is still just one out in the inning. But that means the double play ball is still in effect here for Washington State if they can get it to get out of the inning. Could this be it, though, for Connor Wilford? Nathan Choate is out of the dugout to have a talk with his pitcher. He's now thrown 79 pitches, 14 here in the inning, while getting just one out so far. As we said, though, he's gone 90 pitches or more on four other occasions here so far this year. And we haven't seen a signal to the bullpen yet, so it looks like Choate may stick with his starter here. Order, earn, enjoy. It's the easy, it's that easy to earn free food with the My McDonald's Rewards. Get exclusive offers and rack up rewards. Download the McDonald's app today. All right, meeting the mound is over, and Connor Wilford will remain in this ball game. Meanwhile, I'll let you know that Washington State basketball out to a 7-0 lead over Iowa State here at the first media timeout, 15:55 to play in the first half, and the seven-seeded Cougs with a 7-0 lead over Iowa State. First meeting between these teams in basketball, you'll remember they met in the Alamo Bowl back in 2018, the Gardner Minshew year. Base hit, or excuse me, on the ground. Joey Kramer can't handle it, but they fire over to first and they get the out. A big out for the Cougs, but the first run will score. An interesting play because Jackson lined a chopper right at Joey Kramer. It came off his glove, and so it looked like it would be an easy base hit. But Crew Park came over and fired over the pitcher Wilford to make the out at first, but not before Campos could come around to score the first run for ASU. And now all the umpires are meeting to make sure they saw what they saw correctly. And they're still talking out there to figure this out. But what I have is an RBI fielder's choice for Jackson is what I think it should be to score the run. They've put the run up on the scoreboard here at Bailey Brayton for Arizona State. It has not been reflected yet on the stat broadcast live scoring computer system. So not exactly sure what the officiating crew is still looking at here. If it's an out, though, it's an important out for Connor Wilford and the Cougs, even if one run does come across on the play. And while they're sorting that out, I'll tell you that uh, in that 7 nothing lead early on here for Kyle Smith and the men's basketball team, it's Jalen Wells with five points in the early going. He's two for three from the floor, including a three-pointer. Isaac Jones has two points from the free throw line, and the Cyclones have yet to score. They are 0 for 7 from the field against Washington State. And maybe there was an official injured on the play because two of the umpiring crew are over behind the ASU dugout. Maybe they're taking a look at a replay here to try to figure out what the play was. 
and they've signaled an out. So I guess what they're saying is what we thought all along, that Isaiah Jackson was indeed out at first base, but Campo still does come around to score on the fielder's choice. Well, I guess I'll say on the ground out. And now we've got Tobias over at first and Mendoza at second. So here's the first pitch to Mario Demera that misses outside for a ball. So one run is across and two are in scoring position here for ASU. But there are now two outs in the inning and that's big for Washington State. Here's the 1-0 to Demera. Off speed pitch in there for a strike, 76 miles per hour. That looked like the curveball from Wilford. One one pitch on the way, and that is hammered in the left field. And getting the glove on it is Tagger. Boy, he looked confused on the play. It was hit to him at an awkward angle, but he ranges back towards the wall, reaches back with his left hand, and makes the third out as the Kooks hold the Sun Devils to just one run despite all kinds of trouble in that inning. We go to the bottom of the six after that is now 2-1 Washington State. Which schools will take home the prestigious Learfield Directors Cup for the 2023-24 college athletic season? You can follow the standings of your favorite school or alma mater at L Directors Cup on Twitter and online at thedirectorscup.com. That's thedirectorscup.com and L Directors Cup on Twitter. Trophies will be awarded in June 2024 to the winning institutions in all competitive divisions. Learfield Directors Cup, the crowning achievement in college athletics. A lot goes into Washington State athletes reaching peak performance for game day, including the right nutrition. At Wilbur Ellis, we know that healthy crop performance requires the same attention to nutrition as an athlete. That's why we use benchmark data points to maximize crop productivity through nutrient efficiency. For 100 years, family-owned Wilbur Ellis has been partnering with Washington's farmers to grow healthier crops. That is the winning ag experience for Cougar Nation, locally provided by Wilbur Ellis. All right, welcome back here to Bailey Brayton Field in Pullman, where the Cougs lead it by a count of two to one now as we play in the bottom of the six. ASU just pushed their first run across the plate, but it could have been much worse. They had runners at second and third before it was Case and Taggart coming up with a big catch in left field to hold the Sun Devils at bay. And another update now on the basketball team in Omaha. They lead it seven to one over the Cyclones with 14. 20 to play in the first half. Jalen Wells with five of the seven early on for the Cougs. Connor Markle still out there on the mound for ASU, and he starts off Joey Kramer with the ball up high. Cyclones still without a field goal against the Cougs here. We've played almost six minutes. Next pitch in there for a strike against Kramer. It's one and one. Kramer. Two for two on the day, a single in the first and a solo homer back in the fourth. And now it's going to be three for three because that ball is off the glove of the third baseman, Demera. And then Ondina can't make the throw over to first. So three for three day right now for Joey Kramer. And I did have to check the live score just to make sure they would rule that a single and not an error, but it is a single as I suspected. And that's going to bring up Brandon Ponce. He will pinch hit for Griffin Sotomayor. Sotomayor was 0 for 2 with a pair of strikeouts. Ponce out of federal way. Here's the first pitch to him, and it misses outside for ball one. So Ponce on the season, hitless and nine at bats. This would be a good time for a first though. And that one upstairs, it's two and oh. This is the eighth game he's appeared in on the year. He has struck out five times and walked once. 
Last year batted 222 and 27 at bats. 2-0 to Ponce, put on the ground. Right behind the second base bag, second baseman fires over shortstop for one and then turns two on the flip to first base. So just like that, grounding into a double play is the pinch hitter Ponce and the Cougs have two outs here in the sixth after the leadoff single from Joey Kramer. So far this series, the Cougs have not been able to find any success out of that designated hitter spot. Here's Cole Kramer now, who grounded out in the first, flew out in the fourth. Next pitch to Kramer, misses low and outside for ball one. Yesterday was Logan Johnstone starting at the DH spot. And the 1-1 now to Kramer, chopped back to the pitcher's mound. Markle grabs it and underhands to his first baseman. Three up and three down for the Cougs here in the sixth. We'll go to the seventh after this. You're listening to Washington State Baseball from Learfield. That to-do list you have needs one more thing. Chill. It's an easy thing to do. Just crack open a nice cold Coors Light and chill. Take the afternoon off and binge watch anything. Go to happy hour and stay for a couple hours. Who's counting anyways? Or hang out with just your dog because you've had enough human interaction this week. Whatever you do, do it with a Coors Light. Mountain cold refreshment made to chill. 2024 Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Celebrate responsibly. Which schools will take home the prestigious Learfield Director's Cup for the 2023-24 college athletic season? You can follow the standings of your favorite school or alma mater at L Director's Cup on Twitter and online at thedirectorscup.com. That's thedirectorscup.com and L Director's Cup on Twitter. Trophies will be awarded in June 2024 to the winning institutions in all competitive divisions. Learfield Director's Cup, the crowning achievement in college athletics. Welcome back to Bailey Brayton Field here in Pullman. I'm Derek Dice filling in for Matt Chasnow, who's on the air in Omaha, Nebraska right now with our good friend Craig Elo calling the WSU men's basketball game, second round NCAA tournament game against the Cyclones of Iowa State. And at the under 12 media timeout, it's the Cougs leading the Cyclones by a count of 11 to four, just one field goal in over eight minutes for the Cyclones. Meanwhile, it's Jalen Wells with five, Isaac Jones with four, and Miles Rice with a pair of points for the Cougs in that one. Connor Wilford, the Cougs starting pitcher here today, back out here to start the seventh inning, and he starts Steven Ondina off with a ball here. That was his 84th pitch of this ball game. Here comes 85, just misses inside, and it's 2-0. and oh. Wilford's been very good, did labor a bit in that last inning, the sixth when he gave up one run, and he misses outside here again. So it's 3-0 and to Ondina. Ondina had to come on for Jax Ryan after Ryan injured himself, trying to make a diving stab early in the game. That one's in there for a strike, 3-1. and one. Boy, the Cougs would love to take the second game of this series and have a series win under their belt. That one's popped high into the air. Kramer in foul territory in front of the Cougar dugout makes the play for out number one. Nice job of pitching there by Connor Wilford after falling behind 3-0 and in the count to get the foul out on Ondino. That sends things back to the top of the lineup. Harris Williams, the leadoff hitter and left fielder, He's reached base one time with a walk in the first, lined out in the third, and flew out back in the fifth. First pitch to Williams, chopped foul up the right field line, and it's 0-1. Williams batting 319 on the year, three home runs, 16 runs batted in for the Sun Devils. Here's the 0-1 now from Wilford, frozen, strike one on the outside corner. Come on, come on, come on. 
Williams was one for six last night, so he's one for nine in this series. Cresswell was set up way outside on that one. I think they were trying to get Williams to swing at one outside of the zone, but he wasn't taken. It's now one and two. And it's chopped to the first baseman, Joey Kramer, gets it on a hop and steps on the bag himself for out number two. Two up and two down here for Wilford in the seventh. 92 pitches now, make that 93. Nope, I was right the first time. 92 pitches thrown for Connor Wilford. If he can deliver another out here against Brandon Compton, Nathan Cho will only have to turn things over to his bullpen for these final two innings if the Cougs can hang on to this lead. And he starts Compton off with the ball just down low. It's 1-0. Second pitch on the way. Swung on and hit right through the gap into right field. Crew Park was shaded well over towards the first base bag, playing for Compton to pull that ball, but he hit it right in the perfect spot where neither he or Joey Kramer could get to it. And a base hit for Compton here with two outs in the top of the seventh. And Wilford is still out there though. Now 94 pitches thrown. Here's Ryan Campos, the catcher. Reached base on an error and scored his last time up. Catches the inside corner of the plate against the lefty for a strike one. So Compton out there at first. He has stolen two bases so far this year. That one is fouled back towards the Cougar clubhouse on the left field side. 0-2 now to the Sun Devil catcher. How about a strikeout here for Wilfer to get out of the inning and cap his day? That one's upstairs, though, for a ball. It's one and two. Wilford, another glance over to first base. The one-two delivery to Campos. Oh, just miss on that outside corner. He thought he had it for strike three. And I know I've said this several times now, but Wilford continues to try to paint the outside corner of the plate against left-handed hitters. And he, he's been either just getting it over or just missing for much of the day. Here's the 2-2 two -two now. Wilford fires over to first and said he caught him off the bag and he just got back in time. Oh, boy. The fans here at... Bailey Brayton thought they'd gotten him. In fact, maybe we've got some disagreement above by the umpires. The first base umpire, Stephen Corgi, said safe, but now they're converging to the right of the pitcher's mound to talk about this. I wonder if they're gonna go to video here once again and take a look. This could be a really pivotal play in this ball game for the Cougs, given that Wilford is already at 98 pitches, and the Cougs would love to have him finish off this inning if they can. Two of the umpires now putting on headsets and going to take a look at the video here to see what happened. While they do that, I'll tell you, Coors Light, Mountain Cold Refreshment, made to chill, proud partner of Cougar Athletics. Make sure you celebrate responsibly. And we'll give you another update here on the Cougar basketball team. They lead the Cyclones. 14-6 to six now, under nine minutes to play in the first half in Omaha. So it's been a great start here for the Cougs. Now 14-8 to eight after an alley-oop dunk by uh, Iowa State there that just happened. Jalen Wells still leading the way with five points. Andre Yakimovsky now on the board with a three ball for the Cougs. Again, as they're trying to get to the Sweet 16 for the first time since 2008, Isaiah Watts steps into a three. That goes begging, and it's still 14-8. to eight. The officials still in an official review here as they look at that pickoff play to first base to see if Connor Wilford actually caught Brandon Compton off the bag and if Joey Kramer was able to apply the tag before he made it back. Greg Ward is a uh, 
photographer who does a wonderful job with p still pictures for Cougar Athletics. He's standing right on the other side of the fence of those officials wanting to be the first one to find out what happens or what they decide on this play. Two to one, Cougars in the lead here, top of the seventh uh, inning. Six, 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 five, 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 If they do say that Compton was caught off the bag, Brandon, excuse me, Ryan Campos will be back at the plate to start the eighth inning for the Sun Devils. And they've got the headsets off. They're making some marks on a piece of paper, and now they say it's an out. So a big out for Connor Wilford and the Cougs. That ends the top half of the seventh and preserves a two to one lead for Washington State. We go to the seventh inning stretch as we take a break here. This is Washington State Baseball from Learfield. A lot goes into Washington State athletes reaching peak performance for game day, including the right nutrition. At Wilbur Ellis, we know that healthy crop performance requires the same attention to nutrition as an athlete. That's why we use benchmark data points to maximize crop productivity through nutrient efficiency. For 100 years, family-owned Wilbur Ellis has been partnering with Washington's farmers to grow healthier crops. That is the winning ag experience for Cougar Nation, locally provided by Wilbur Ellis. It's time to bring the big game to your backyard with spring savings on steel. Our AK homeowner system battery tools start at just $199.99. Find yours at over 10,000 local dealers. Steel is a proud supporter of your Washington State Cougars. Real Steel. Find yours. All prices s and SRP. Well, both starting pitchers going deep into this ball game. Connor Wilford is through seven for Washington State. And Connor Markle looks like he'll be attempting to do the same for Arizona State as he is back on the mound, taking his warm-up tosses here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Markle has thrown 88 pitches in total. He's allowed six hit, six hits, two runs, both of them earned. He has struck out six and only walked one. Leading things off for Washington State here in the bottom of the seventh will be the catcher, Will Cresswell. He'll be followed by Nate Swartz, the center fielder, and the second baseman in Crew Park. And the Cougs would love an insurance run or two here in the late innings to try to put this away against the Sun Devils. And Cresswell will step to the plate. He flew out in the second and grounded out back in the fourth. First pitch to Cresswell in there for a, I'm sorry, just misses for a ball and it's one and oh. Next pitch to Cresswell. Outside just misses, ball two. Two to one Washington State as we play here in the bottom half of the seventh inning from Pullman. Next pitch to Cresswell, swung on and belted, but foul, it'll hit the roof of the Miller Indoor Practice Facility over there. The two one now to Cresswell. Swing and a miss by the Cougar catcher, and it's two and two. You hear some dogs barking. A reminder, if you're just joining us, it's Bark in the Park Day. 2-2 two, two to Cresswell. Swung on, put on the ground. And the second or shortstop on Dina made a play, but he can't get the throw there in time. On Dina and Demera, the third baseman, both went after that ball. Ondina grabbed it deep in the hole, fired off his back foot to first base, and Cresswell just barely legged it out. In fact, we've got another 
umpires meeting, and they're going to go to video replay again here to see if Cresswell is actually safe or not. This is the third time now, I think in the last about inning and a half, that they're going to video replay to see uh, what's happening here. So while they do that, let's give you another update on the basketball game, and it is... The Cougs still in front of the Cyclones, but a little closer now at 14 to 10. In fact, it looked like uh, Cougs just got called for basket interference. Miles Rice on a drive and Oscar Clough tipped it in in the cylinder. Probably was going in for Miles would have given the Cougs a six point lead. Instead, it's still at four with 657 to play in the first half in Omaha. All right, they're looking at the video replay here once again to see if Cresswell was able to leg out that ground ball deep in the hole between short and third, or if Ondina, in fact, made a terrific defensive play for Arizona State. We talked about earlier a chance of rain throughout this ball game, but uh, the clouds have held up and it's not super warm here in Pullman, only 48 degrees, but at least there's no rain. It was warmer yesterday, but we did have rain throughout that game. All right, they're coming out and they're saying Cresswell is out at first. So instead of having a leadoff infield single, Markle has a leadoff out here and that's gonna bring Nate Swartz to the dish. All right, Swartz struck out in each of his first two at-bats in the second and fifth innings. Here's the first pitch from Markle, and that misses for ball one. Pitch two, paints the outside corner for a strike. It's one and one now here to Swartz. Markle's 1-1 one, one delivery down low. Ball two. And now the 2-1 to Swartz. Swung on and lifted foul out of play down the right field line back toward the Sun Devil bullpen. All right, 2 2 delivery to Swartz on the way outside, ball three. So the count full here now to the Cougar center fielder. And Connor Markle now, this will be his 99th pitch, swung on and hit into center field. That could get down for extra bases. Swartz with a one hopper to the wall. He rounds first, heads for second, and a one out double for Nate Swartz here in the bottom of the seventh, and the Cougs are back in business. Nice piece of hitting there by Swartz to work the count full and then hit a ball hard to deep center field. I wonder if Isaiah Jackson, the center fielder for ASU, had a tough time locating that off the bat of Swartz. It seemed like he got a late start getting to that ball. Meanwhile, Iowa State with a bit of a run here. They've taken their first lead of the game over the Cougs in Omaha, 17-16, just over five minutes to play in the first half. And just as I say that, Jalen Wells drills a three-pointer to put the Cougs back on top, and he's the first player in the double figures for Washington State with 10 points in this game. All right, so the catcher, Campos, is out of the mound talking to his pitcher, Markle, and I wonder if they're just trying to buy some time for somebody to get ready down in the bullpen. Well, instead, no, Campos gives his pitcher a little attaboy tap on the shoulder, and he's going back behind the plate. So it's Crew Park coming up in what could be a big spot here for Washington State with a runner in scoring position and one out here in the bottom of the seventh. Park struck out in the second and walked in the fifth. Markle takes a look back at Swartz at second, now comes to the plate and fires outside, ball one.
Fires back to second, gets away from the second baseman, Mendoza, and Swartz is gonna slide into third on the botched pickoff attempt. We saw Markle attempt that earlier in the game where he wheels around and tries to fire to second base to catch the runner off the bag. This one got away from Mendoza. It wasn't a great throw. And Swartz takes the extra base here to advance to third. Now, the infield is in for Park. Outside, ball two, two and oh. Boy, the Coos would love a third run here just for a little bit more breathing room. Here's the 2-0 pitch. Inside, ball three. Here comes a 3-0 pitch now to Crew Park. Swung on and lifted high into the air in right field. This should be able to score Swartz as he tags up and heads for home. Here comes a throw from McLean. It will not be in time. And the Cougs have a third run of the ball game here and a little bit of insurance as they lead it now three to one in the seventh, second consecutive day that Park has hit a sacrifice fly scoring Swartz. So nice job by Crew Park, hitting that just deep enough to bring in his center fielder, Nate Swartz. And I believe that's gonna be it for the starting pitcher, Connor Markle for the Sun Devils. So as we get ready for a pitching change, let's take a time out here and we'll tell you who's coming out of the bullpen for ASU right after this. The Clearwater River Casino and Lodge proudly supports Washington State University Athletics. The premier venue for events and entertainment. Located four miles east of Lewiston, Idaho. Come hit the jackpot with us. With over 600 gaming machines, saltwater pool, restaurant, and giant screens in the stadium sports bar. Owned and operated by the Nez Perce Tribe, our hospitality is legendary. Stay, play, and get away with the Clearwater River Casino. Go Cooks! That to-do list you have needs one more thing. Chill. It's an easy thing to do. Just crack open an ice cold Coors Light and chill. Take the afternoon off and binge watch anything. Go to happy hour and stay for a couple hours. Who's counting anyways? Or hang out with just your dog because you've had enough human interaction this week. Whatever you do, do it with a Coors Light. Mountain cold refreshment made to chill. 2024 Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Celebrate responsibly. All right, welcome back. It is Sean Fitzpatrick, the first reliever into the ball game here for either team. Fitzpatrick is a left-handed throwing sophomore out of Spring, Texas. Started at uh, the University of Arkansas before making his way to ASU. He stands six foot tall and 165 pounds. He will be making his 12th appearance of the year. He is 0-1 with an 8.64 ERA, an eight and one-thirds innings pitch. He's allowed 10 hits, eight runs, all of them earned. He struck out nine and walked five, opposing hitters batting 313 against Fitzpatrick. So the Cougars we mentioned wanted to get a little bit of insurance and they got it there with the sacrifice fly from Crew Park scoring Nate Swartz who had hit the one out double and then advanced to third on the botched pickoff attempt by Markle. And while we're waiting for him to take his Fitzpatrick to finish up his warm up tosses, let's tell you that uh, Kyle Smith and the Cougar men's basketball team lead Iowa State 21-19 with four minutes to go in the first half. Jalen Wells has had the hot hand for the Cougs. He's five of nine from the floor, including a pair of three-pointers. Cougs jumped out to an early 7-0 lead, but the Cyclones have been pretty tough ever since to keep this to a two-point ball game right now, late first half been really fun to see the rise of this Cougar basketball team uh, throughout the course of this season, the fifth season under Kyle Smith, gaining in confidence seemingly each and every week, especially after inserting Jalen Wells into the starting lineup back in December. They've been really tough to beat. All right, back to the top of the order now. Max Hartman with two outs here in the bottom of the seventh takes a ball outside from the pitcher, the new pitcher, Fitzpatrick. 
Fitzpatrick, a lefty, facing the lefty Hartman. Inside with that one for ball two. Fitzpatrick sets. Here's the 2-0 to Hartman. Just misses outside that time for ball three. So three pitches and three balls so far for the ASU reliever Fitzpatrick. Hartman batting 367 on the year. Here's the 3-0 taken all the way and it's in there for a strike at the belly button. Three and one. Fitzpatrick sets. Here's the 3-1 to Hartman. Inside, ball four. And the Cougs have another base runner here in the seventh. Shortstop, number one, Kyle. And in Omaha, Jalen Wells cannot be stopped. He's got 14 points now as the Cougs now lead the Cyclones by six, 25 to 19, 240 to play in the first half. Jalen Wells has been on fire. Seven field goals already. Here's Kyle Russell with a man on and two out in the seventh. Breaking pitch way upstairs for ball one. The 1-0 now, nope, so they're gonna throw over to first. Hartman back in plenty of time. Hartman will steal the base though. He's nine for 12 in that department on the year. All right, here's the 1-0 pitch outside, ball two, 2-0. Two oh. All right, Fitzpatrick sets. Here's the 2-0 delivery to the Cougar shortstop. Outside, ball three. So far, Eight pitches thrown and seven balls from Fitzpatrick. And he's way behind on the count here against Kyle Russell. The 3 0 now to Russell. In there for a strike, three and one. Around the Pac 12, we'll tell you that uh, it's Oregon State leading the University of Washington 12 to 2, top of the seventh in Corvallis. Remember, the Beavers got 10 runs in the top or the bottom of the first inning of that ball game. 3 1, they caught him in a pickoff attempt. And they've got him in a rundown now, and he cannot get back to the bag. And that's the third out of the inning. Hartman seemed to be in no man's land. Throw over to first base, caught him off the bag, and that's going to be the third out. So Russell will be able to come back to the plate to start the eighth. But uh, the Cougs squander another opportunity there. We go to the top half of the eighth inning. Cougs leading it 3-1 to one over Arizona State. We'll be right back. Which schools will take home the prestigious Learfield Director's Cup for the 2023-24 college athletic season? You can follow the standings of your favorite school or alma mater at L Directors Cup on Twitter and online at thedirectorscup.com. That's thedirectorscup.com and L Directors Cup on Twitter. Trophies will be awarded in June 2024 to the winning institutions in all competitive divisions. Learfield Director's Cup, the crowning achievement in college athletics. That to-do list you have needs one more thing. Chill. It's an easy thing to do. Just crack open an ice-cold Coors Light and chill. Take the afternoon off and binge watch anything. Go to happy hour and stay for a couple hours. Who's counting anyways? Or hang out with just your dog because you've had enough human interaction this week. Whatever you do, do it with a Coors Light. Mountain cold refreshment made to chill. 2024 Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Celebrate responsibly. Well, guess who's still out there for Washington State? It's the Cougs starting pitcher, Connor Wilford, despite having thrown 98 pitches already. Nathan Choate sends him back out there to start the eighth inning with the Cougs clinging to a three to one lead against the Sun Devils of Arizona State. And the catcher 
Ryan Campos will lead things off here in the eighth. Remember, he was at the plate back in the seventh when the Coos caught Brandon Compton in a pickoff at first base. So Campos gets to come back in to lead things off here in the eighth. And here's the first pitch from Wilford, swung on and lifted high into the air. Taggart's going to have a chance in foul territory, but he can't quite get there. Was about a step and a half away from making that play in front of the Cougar bullpen. And for the first time all day, we've got sunshine covering Bailey Brayton Field here on this Saturday afternoon. Keep an eye on that basketball game happening in, over in Omaha. It has actually gone to the half and the Cyclones have tied it at 27. The Cougs led most of the way in that first half of play. Cyclones roaring back late. There's a base hit up the middle by Campos and he's going for two. Hartman with the throw in, they can't make it in time. A leadoff double for the catcher Campos. Maybe caught the Cougs sleeping a little bit on that one as they didn't think the catcher was gonna be able to leg out a two bagger, but he gets there. And that's not great for the Cougs here to lead things off in the eight. 16 points in that first half for Jalen Wells, who was seven of 12 from the field. Isaac Jones and Miles Rice each with four. Andre Yakamowski, the only other scorer with three. So Wilford now in a bit of a pinch. Big swing and a miss from Jacob Tobias here at strike one. And you just wonder how big of a leash Wilford is going to have here. This next pitch will be number 102 on the day. That one's outside, ball one. This is the highest number of pitches he's thrown in the game this season, 97 being the highest back on February the 24th against Kansas. Wilford looks back at second. Now comes to the plate outside, ball two. There is, of course, activity in the Cougar bullpen. Wilford's 2-1 now to Tobias. Swung on and lifted into the air. Hartman goes back on it in right field. Puts his feet on the warning track. Now steps in to make the catch and fires over to Russell, but not in time to get Campos tagging and advancing to third base. But the Cougars exchange an out for allowing the Sun Devils to move up a base. Remember, it's still a two-run lead here at three to one, so one run won't kill you. Nick McLean now here at the plate for ASU with one out. McLean singled in the fourth, but flew out in both the second and sixth innings. Wilford fouled back and well out of play. That's pitch number 105 for Connor, who's gone the distance here so far for Washington State. Next up would be Ethan Mendoza. And foul back into the netting again. And McLean, a lefty, and Mendoza, a righty. So perhaps Choate will go to the bullpen here after McLean, regardless of what happens. 0-2 oh, now to McLean. Up high with a fastball, one and two. Cougs leading it three to one here. We're in the top half of the eighth inning at Bailey Brayton Field in Pullman. The one, two, up high again. Count goes even here at two and two. 108 pitches for Wilford now. He has gone 90 plus pitches in now five of his six starts this season. Here's the 2-2 to McLean. Swung on and hit into right field. That's gonna bring in a run as it bounces in front of Hartman. A one out RBI single here for McLean makes it a 3-2 ball game. So McLean singles into right. That scores the leadoff man Campos. And it's now 3-2 with one out here in the eighth. And I think that's 
got to be it now for Connor Wilford here at 109 pitches in this ball game. Nathan Choate making this slow walk out to the mound. He hasn't taken the ball from his pitcher just yet. And now he asks for it, and that's going to do it for Connor Wilford. All right, well, why don't we take a break here for a pitching change? We'll tell you who's coming out of the bullpen for the Cougs after this. Boost Collaborative is a proud sponsor of Cougar Basketball and is a proud supporter of people with disabilities on the Palouse. For over 50 years, Boost Collaborative has been here to help families and their toddlers meet developmental milestones. For youth and adults, Boost provides job placement, on-the-job training, and follow-along supports. Now you can play a part in Boost's success through your donations and purchases at Palouse Treasures Thrift Store in Pullman. Boost Collaborative, empowering people with disabilities on the Palouse. Go Cougs! The Clearwater River Casino and Lodge proudly supports Washington State University Athletics. The premier venue for events and entertainment located four miles east of Lewiston, Idaho. Come hit the jackpot with us with over 600 gaming machines, saltwater pool, restaurant, and giant screens in the stadium sports bar. Owned and operated by the Nez Perce Tribe, our hospitality is legendary. Stay, play, and get away with the Clearwater River Casino. Go Cooks! All right, so Connor Wilford's day is done. After throwing 109 pitches, he goes seven and a third, allows nine hits, two runs, one of them earned. In fact, he is still on the hook for McLean out there at first base before we can close the book on him. Struck out two and walked two, facing 32 batters. And into the game for the Cougs now is... Caden Wickersham. He's a six foot one, 181 pound right handed junior out of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Went to Hutchinson Community College before making his way here to Pullman on the year. Wickersham with a 4.26 ERA in eight appearances. This will be his ninth. He's thrown 12 and two thirds innings, allowing 11 hits, six runs, all of them earned, seven strikeouts, and four walks. He inherits a runner at first base with one out here in the eighth inning. And Wickersham steps off the mound here to reset. In fact, Cresswell wants to go have a word with him as he adjusts his hat. No, he says, not Will, I got it, I'm good. So Wickersham resets on the bump. Mendoza taps home plate, and here is the first pitch from Wickersham. Instead, it's a throw over to first to chase McLean back to the bag. Cougs have never trailed in this ball game. They scored first in the bottom of the second inning. First pitch to Mendoza through the hole, another base hit into right. McLean thought about rounding second and heading to third but they hold them up so with one out the Sun Devils now with two men on base and that brings up Isaiah Jackson the center fielder he singled back in the second flew out in the fourth and grounded out in the sixth he's now batting 238 on the year has some pop though, five home runs on the year. First pitch from Wickersham, in there for a strike at the knees. It's one and oh, excuse me, oh and one. That fastball at 90 miles per hour. Wickersham looks back at second, now delivers, and foul tipped off the catcher, Will Cresswell's mask, and back to the netting behind home plate. It's 0 and two. Wickersham can run it up there. It's up to 94 miles per hour on the fastball. Let's see if he can get Jackson here on an 0-2 pitch. Up high, ball one. So it's McLean at second, Mendoza out there at first, Jackson at the plate for ASU against Wickersham for the Cougs. Caden takes a look back at second, now delivers. Ball on the ground, through the hole and into left field. McLean held up at third, though, as they weren't sure they were going to make it, and they didn't want to test the arm of Case and Taggart. So a base hit for Jackson, but they hold Wicker, or excuse me, they hold McLean at third. But it's bases loaded here for ASU with one out in the eighth. 
So Wickersham has come in and quickly given up back-to-back -back base hits. And we've got a pinch hitter, Kien Vu, who also pinch hit in last night's game in for Mario Demera. Demera was 0 for 3 on the day. Here's the first pitch to Vu. Breaking ball. Slider in there at 81 miles per hour for a strike. Again, bases loaded situation. Kuz clinging to a 3-2 lead. Vu, right to the shortstop, Russell, who turns and fires to second for the double play. And the Cougs get out of the inning and maintain this 3-2 lead. A great double play turned by the shortstop, Russell. We go to the bottom of the eighth. The Cougs still in the lead at 3-2. Hey Cougs, life doesn't stop at retirement. Bishop Place has a wide range of activities, social events, and fitness options depending on your interests. We have many options to explore depending on the level of care you need. Bishop Place also has housekeeping, dining, and transportation services. Less worry, less chores, more life, and more choices. Visit us on the web at bishopplace.net or call to schedule your tour today. 509-334-9488. We can't wait to see you. A lot goes into Washington State athletes reaching peak performance for game day, including the right nutrition. At Wilbur Ellis, we know that healthy crop performance requires the same attention to nutrition as an athlete. That's why we use benchmark data points to maximize crop productivity through nutrient efficiency. For 100 years, family-owned Wilbur Ellis has been partnering with Washington's farmers to grow healthier crops. That is the winning ag experience for Cougar Nation, locally provided by Wilbur Ellis. All right, a big, big defensive play for Washington State to end the eighth inning there as Kien Vu, the pinch hitter for ASU, lined one right to the Cougar shortstop, Kyle Russell, who made the catch and then whirled over to the second baseman, Crew Park, for the double play to end the inning and leave the bases loaded for ASU. So... Here in the bottom of the eighth, the Cougs hanging on to that 3-2 lead here in game two of this series against the Sun Devils of Arizona State. Just what the doctor ordered there for the Cougar defense. And coming up to the plate now for Washington State is going to be the man who just finished off that double play at the end of the inning in Kyle Russell. He was up at the end of the seventh, and after Max Hartman got picked off there at first, he comes back to the plate here to lead things off in the eighth. Foul back into the netting behind home plate, and it's 0-1. Again, halftime in Omaha. Cougs tied at 27th, Iowa State. Jalen Wells was 16 of the 27 for WSU. Next pitch to Russell is a ball just outside one and one. And here comes the one one now. Russell lifts one in the right field. Is it gonna drop? No, McLean makes the running catch in shallow right field to deny Russell of a base hit. And the Cougs have one out here in the eighth. And that's going to bring up Casey Taggart. Singled back in the first, flew out in the third, and struck out in the fifth. Casey, again, worth mentioning, a mammoth two-run homer in last night's win for Washington State. First pitch from the lefty Fitzpatrick is in there for a strike. One to Taggart, misses outside, one and one. Here comes the one one pitch, and Taggart hits one into or near the Cougar bullpen out there in left field, out of play, one and two. Taggart, a team leading six home runs on the year, batting 346. 
Here's the one-two pitch on the way. Oh, just caught the outside corner of the plate, and he gets caught looking at strike three for the second consecutive at bat, and two down for the Cougs here in the eighth. That's going to bring up Joey Kramer, the first baseman, and Willie Bloomquist is going to make a call to his bullpen to bring in his third pitcher of the game. Let's pause for the uh, pitching change. We'll be back in one minute here on the Washington State Sports Network from Learfield. Which schools will take home the prestigious Learfield Directors Cup for the 2023-24 college athletic season? You can follow the standings of your favorite school or alma mater at L Directors Cup on Twitter and online at thedirectorscup.com. That's thedirectorscup.com and L Directors Cup on Twitter. Trophies will be awarded in June 2024 to the winning institutions in all competitive divisions. Learfield Directors Cup, the crowning achievement in college athletics. The Clearwater River Casino and Lodge proudly supports Washington State University Athletics. The premier venue for events and entertainment located four miles east of Lewiston, Idaho. Come hit the jackpot with us with over 600 gaming machines, saltwater pool, restaurant, and giant screens in the stadium sports bar. Owned and operated by the Nez Perce Tribe, our hospitality is legendary. Stay, play, and get away with the Clearwater River Casino. Go Cougs! Welcome back to Bailey Brayton Field. Derek Dice here. Pinch hitting for Matt Chaz now, who, of course, is in Omaha with the Cougar men's basketball team. But we've got a good one here in Pullman. Cougs clinging to a 3-2 lead in the bottom of the eighth inning. The new pitcher into the ball game for Arizona State is Hunter Omlid. He is a right-handed pitching graduate transfer from Grand Canyon, uh, but originally out of Hamilton, Montana. So... Decent chance he's got some family here for this series because Hamilton is right outside of Missoula, about four hour drive away from here in Pullman. He is six foot two, 200 pounds, and on the season, Omelette with a 3.95 ERA. He is two and two in nine appearances, throwing 13 and two thirds innings. He's allowed eight hits, six runs, all of them earned, 20 strikeouts against just five bases on balls, opposing hitters hitting just 167 against him. So perhaps ASU coach Willie Bloomquist going to a high volume strikeout guy here to try to get out of this inning with two outs here in the bottom of the eighth facing Joey Kramer, the Cougar first baseman. First pitch swinging, fouls it back behind the broadcast booth and out of play, and it's 0-1. Cougs with three runs on seven hits and one error. Sun Devils two runs on 11 hits and an error. Here's the second pitch. Misses outside, does omelet, and it is 1-1. One and one. ASU, should they lose this game, are going to kick themselves because they have left nine runners on base in this ballgame. Here's the 1-1 one, one now to Kramer. He was taken all the way, and it's in there for a strike, one and two. The 1-2 now to Kramer. Swung on and put into the gap and into center field past the diving shortstop there in uh, Steven Ondina and into left center field. So a two out base hit here for Joey Kramer. He is four for four on the day. Three singles and a solo homer. What a day for Kramer. And that's going to bring up Brandon Ponce once again who came on as a Pinch hitter for Griffin Sotomayor back in the six and grounded into a double play. Let's see if he can come through for the Cougs here this time. First pitch from Omelette. Hit him. Hit him right on the hands, it looked like. And Ponce will take his base. And just like that, the Cougs have two on with two outs. Third baseman number 32. I believe that's the first hit batter for either team in this ballgame. That brings up Cole Kramer. He's 0 for 3, two ground outs and a fly out. But for a guy batting nearly 400 on the season, you'd have to say that means he's due for a base hit here. And a base hit could add another much needed insurance run for Washington State. Cougs lead at 3 2 here in the bottom of the eighth.
Here's the first pitch to Cole Kramer. Down low and inside, ball one, one and one. And we're going to have a pinch runner here. Coming into the ball game is going to be Eli Cannell to take the place of Brandon Ponce. Kennel, an Oregon State transfer out of Monmouth, Oregon. A little more fleet of foot than Ponce. All right, here comes the 1-0 pitch to Cole Kramer. Outside, ball two. So since coming to the ball game, Hunter Omlid has allowed a seeing eye single and then hit a batter to make things interesting here in the eighth. That one chopped high to the third baseman who takes a second, establishes himself, and then fires over to first for the third out of the inning. So the Cougs leave two stranded. We go to the top of the ninth. It's closing time with the Cougs up three to two over the Sun Devils. The Clearwater River Casino and Lodge proudly supports Washington State University Athletics. The premier venue for events and entertainment located four miles east of Lewiston, Idaho. Come hit the jackpot with us with over 600 gaming machines, saltwater pool, restaurant, and giant screens in the stadium sports bar. Owned and operated by the Nez Perce Tribe, our hospitality is legendary. Stay, play, and get away with the Clearwater River Casino. Go Cougs! Boost Collaborative is a proud sponsor of Cougar Basketball and is a proud supporter of people with disabilities on the Palouse. For over 50 years, Boost Collaborative has been here to help families and their toddlers meet developmental milestones. For youth and adults, Boost provides job placement, on-the-job training, and follow-along supports. Now you can play a part in Boost's success through your donations and purchases at Palouse Treasures Thrift Store in Pullman. Boost Collaborative, empowering people with disabilities on the Palouse. Go Cougs! Welcome back to Pullman, and the closer out of Kennewick is on the mound to try to finish things off here for Washington State. Chase Grillo picked up the save, throwing the ninth in last night's game, and Chase is back out there here for the Cougs to try to finish this one out as well. This is his 10th appearance of the season, a 4.15 ERA and 13 innings pitch. He has struck out 22 and walked just five. Opposing hitters batting 234 against the former Kamayakin Brave. So Nathan Choate not afraid to go back to his closer here for the second day in a row to try to close things out here against the Sun Devils. Hey, let's get you updated on other scores around the Pac-12 in the top of the seventh. It's UCLA with a 7-4 lead at home over USC. Also in the top of the seventh in Eugene. Oregon leads Arizona 2-1. to one. Bottom of the ninth in Stanford, it's Creighton over the Cardinal 3-2. In Berkeley, the home team Cal with a 3-1 lead over Utah in the eighth. And in Corvallis, it's Oregon State all over the Huskies 14-2 in that one. So Chase Grillo looking to close things out here in the ninth against Arizona State. He'll face Steven Ondino to start things off. First pitch to Ondino. He squared a bunt and laid off, but it's in there for a strike anyway from Grillo at 80 miles an hour. Grillo added a split finger fastball to his repertoire this offseason. Big swing and a miss there from Ondino, and Grillo way ahead in the count here at 0 and 2. Grillo gets his signal. Now comes to the plate with the 0-2 to Ondino. Big swing and a miss. It gets away from Cresswell, who will fire to first to complete the strikeout. One down here for the Cougs in the top of the ninth. And that's going to bring up the leadoff man, Harris Williams. He is 0 for 3 with a walk here in this ball game. Williams, 316 on the season, though. Three home runs, 16 runs batted in. 
Here comes Grillo. That ball is lifted deep into center field. Swartz is back on it. It's towards the wall, but he makes the catch with his back against the wall. That looked like trouble all the way, but Swartz makes the catch right in front of the C in Cougars in right center field for a big second out here in the ninth inning. Boy, if the wind was blowing by another mile or two per hour, that might have carried out for a game-tying home run. Instead, it goes down as a flyout, and the Sun Devils are down to their final out. Brandon Compton batting 359 of the year. First pitch from Grillo. Swung on and hit right to the second baseman park. He scoops it up, fires to first, and the Cougs have won the first two games of this series against ASU. Grillo closes it out, one, two, three in the ninth, and the Cougars draw even in conference play at four and four, and now 14 and eight on the season and also pick up their first Pac-12 series victory of the year with one more to go against the Sun Devils tomorrow. 3-2 is the final. We're back with your post-game show after this. This is Washington State Baseball from Learfield.